tremendous role and may be playing the best football of any team in the country right now. When you look at what they've done the last two weeks, it's been unbelievable, knocking off Colorado and Kansas uh, by a combined score of 101 to 14. I, I just speaks volumes for how strong this Nebraska football team is and how well they're playing at this point in the season. They are really peaking at this time. Well, much of the Nebraska offense centered around the I-backs, or we-backs as they call them, Derrick Brown and Calvin Jones, and they both run for what, about 800 yards this season. They're almost uh, up to 1,700 yards for the year, so a phenomenal pair of running backs, and Iowa State will be hard-pressed to stop them because nobody else has all year. Well, they have great running backs. I mean, I think they're maybe the two of the premier top three or four backs in the country right in one backfield, and they stay fresh. They don't have to carry the ball a lot. They average over 100 yards a game, and Nebraska leads the nation in rushing, but they've got other people who can run the football, too. They've got a fullback, Lance Lewis, who's capable of hitting the big play at any time if you try to stop the eye back too much, and this whole team turned around about three weeks ago when they switched quarterbacks and went to the freshman, Tommy Frazier, who was maybe the most highly recruited running quarterback in the country a year ago, he has turned the offense on. And not to be uh, outdone, the Nebraska defense is also playing very well here of late, holding both Kansas and Colorado to a single touchdown in their games. I think they're kind of uh, underrated because teams look at what Nebraska does offensively and you don't really think about the defense, but they're very quick and very fast, and particularly in the secondary and linebacker spots. Well, I think that's one area where they have moved up the rankings uh, as far as uh, to, to compete with like a Florida State and a Miami. I think they have more speed at outside linebacker and in middle linebackers and also the secondary. Strong up front still, like they always have, but they're playing a 240-pound tackle. That's the first time in a long time, but they have great speed, and I think that makes a difference and makes them really a, still a contender for the national championship. So Iowa State has its work cut out for it this afternoon. Certainly the Cyclones will go with Marv Seiler at quarterback. Jim Walden says Iowa State's had a good week of work in practice sessions, but it's all going to have to come together this afternoon because uh, Nebraska is not a team to try and get well against. Well, it's not, but you know that if there was ever a time for a letdown for Nebraska, it might be today. And I think Iowa State has a lot of players from Nebraska on it who are looking forward to this challenge today. Maybe for some of those players, this game is even bigger than the Iowa football game. So we'll have to see how that plays out today, but it could be a good football game. Stay tuned. We'll be back for the kickoff after these messages on Cyclone Replay. Most feed companies tell you what they will do. Here are four things we won't do. We won't abandon our dealers or sell out to a foreign company. We won't compete with our customers by feeding livestock commercially. And we won't stop doing valuable research. If other companies do differently, that's their business. We're going to continue doing what we do best. We like to think the independent producer prefers our way. Well, Bennett is ready, and the fans are ready, as are Iowa State's receivers. The kick is away, going deep. Brooks lets it bounce out of the end zone, and Iowa State will begin this first offensive series at the 20-yard line. Cyclones will start it out at their own 20, with Marv Seiler at quarterback getting his first start ever at Iowa State. Line of scrimmage, the 20-yard line for this first play. And the give is to the fullback, Ulrich, and he cracks across the 20 and gets a couple of three yards, maybe out to a... Stewart. Stewart and Tyrone Bur Bird make the tackle, and it's a gain of about three, so it's second down and seven coming up for Iowa State. Expect the fullback to get the ball quite a bit this afternoon, and Jim Walden says they'll try and run it right at some people because Nebraska's speed makes it difficult to run around them. Second down and seven for Iowa State. And the give to the fullback again. Ulrich, big hole across the 40-yard line. 45 midfield, and he's drugged down from behind at the 45 of Nebraska. Well, that time, there was a huge hole. Good blocking by the Iowa State offensive line. Ulrich popped right through there and carried all the way to the 45 of Nebraska. Well, Ulrich does not have game-breaking speed, but he is very quick to hit the holes. Very quick off the ball. That time, he hit the hole quickly, ran right through a, a huge hole, and... Couldn't go the distance, but a big, big gain on the play. 32-yard pickup by Chris Ulrich. Tyrone Bird makes the stop. Iowa State with the ball. First down at the Nebraska 45-yard line. The give to the second man through Sherman Williams. And he got about a yard, and that's all. He gets to the 44. Gain of about a yard and a half. Bruce Moore, defensive tackle for Nebraska, wraps him up. And we'll call it second down and about 
eight and a half to go for the first down. Iowa State in Nebraska territory, and Eric, that's what they had to do right off the bat was move the football. And if this gets into a field position game, you at least want to make Nebraska go a long way. Oh, absolutely. They're, they're efficient on offense, so you want to make them go a long way. And if you don't pick up a first down when you're operating against a good breeze, you're going to give them great field position. So that was a big play by Chris Ulrich. Back in the wishbone, loose football on the snap. And let's see if Marv Seiler was able to cover up. As he was backing out of center, the ball dropped, and he does come up with it, so it'll be third down now. Ball still at the 44-yard line of Nebraska. No gain, of course, on that play, so third down, nine yards to go for Iowa State. Ball on the far side hash mark. Jim Walden does not want to throw much today, but he knows he'll have to run some play-action passes just to keep Nebraska honest. I don't know if you'll see it here or not. I don't know if play-action here, I don't think they're going to respect the play fake. Wishbone, here come the linebackers, and Seiler hands off on the underneath plate. Ulrich, he pops through and picks up the first down all the way down to the 32-yard line. A little shuffle pass underneath, and Ulrich picks up the first down. Steve Carmer makes the stop, a gain of 12 on the play. Well, good call that time. They, Nebraska going to try to come and put the pressure on from the outside with the outside linebackers, Trev Alberts and Travis Hill, and they just went underneath them. Good blocking and nice little run by Chris Lowers to pick up the first down. Nebraska was bringing the linebackers that time, and they opened up the hole right over the middle for Ulrich to pick up 12. Here's the give inside, and the ball comes out again at the 30-yard line, and let's see who's on top of it. Looks like Iowa State may have recovered at the 30, and they've dropped the ball twice here on this drive, but have come up with it this time as arm Bruce, I think, at the bottom of the pile. It is for Iowa State. Spotted at the 31-yard line. Not sure what happened on the exchange there. Just, I didn't see it either. I just saw the football come loose. And once again, Iowa State of dodges a bullet. You know, there are five Cyclones, five Nebraskans starting for Iowa State on offense today, so you know they've got to be extra keyed up for this football game. No gain, so it's second down and 10. Here's the option play with Seiler keeping. He gets around the right side, first down at the 20, and he is really upended hard by Tyrone Bird, but he hangs on to the football. He has the first down at the 20-yard line of Nebraska. Well, nice job that time by Marvin Seiler. Makes the right read and ran that time the big defensive tackle, John Perella, 290-pounder, reached out and grabbed Siler's shirt, and Marvin just ran right through it. A nice job and some strength there by Marvin on that particular play. He took a tremendous hit from Tyrone Bird, who came and met him head up as Siler tried to cut it back inside for more yardage. Next time, maybe he'll step out of bounds. <laughs> First down at the 20, out of the wishbone. Williams carries. He fights ahead and fights his way down to about the 16. Well, maybe his knee's down at the 17. We'll give him three on the carry. Mike Anderson makes the tackle for Nebraska. Ball still on the far side hash mark. It'll be second at about seven as Williams picks up three yards. Iowa State started this drive at its own 20-yard line. We're in the first quarter. There's no score. Cyclones have come out and run the football, though, and done a good job. Second down for Iowa State, seven to go. Ball at the 17 of Nebraska. They'll line up in the wishbone once again. And the play underway, they give it off to the fullback Ulrich, and he lunges down to the 15 for a gain of two. So now it's third down and five coming up for Iowa State. The ball at the 15, Travis Hill makes the stop. Ulrich, three carries for 37 yards for Iowa State in this drive, and he's also caught a pass for a pickup of 12. They had a cycle offensive line, really doing a pretty good job against a very powerful front of Nebraska. Third down play for Iowa State. They need five to keep this one going. Wishbone in the backfield. Here's the option. Look, fumbled football, and Nebraska is fighting for it. I think the Huskers have it. No, it's loose again. Iowa State gets it. Boy, what a break for the Cyclones as the Huskers had three men on it at the 23, and it squirted from out underneath, and Iowa State fell on top of it at the 20. Well, two Huskers just wrestling for the football. I know Travis Hill and John Perella, and they knocked it free from one another, and Iowa State recovered it. Now Ty Stewart will be in to try to uh, kick about a 37-yard field goal. Against the wind, too. And Ty has struggled. So this will be spotted at the 27-yard line. Iowa State trying to get on the scoreboard here. Schnorr puts it down. A kick is up. at line drives up and through. Ty Stewart drills it through with 9.46 left to play in the first quarter. 37-yard field goal by Stewart, and Iowa State is on the board.
We now move to action later in the first quarter. Ball at the 41 of Iowa State. First down for Nebraska. And here's the give to Brown. Cuts it back against the grain. He's on his feet at the 35. Nice cut at the 30 and all the way down to the 23-yard line. A gain of 18 by Derek Brown. Little misdirection look as he looked to the left side and then came back to the short side. Todd Miller downfield to make the stop along with Troy Peterson. So the tackle's going a long way downfield to make that stop. But it's a pickup of 18. Well, good hustle by the Cyclone defensive lineman, but good blocking at the point of attack. Once again, a little misdirection, the handback play, and Brown finds a, a hole. And he also makes a great move in the middle, a sharp cutback, and that's what makes the Nebraska runners, especially Derek Brown, a great back. First down play at the 22-yard line. Option to the near side. Frazier keeps, and he is hit hard trying to pitch the ball as he got to about the 20. Dan Milner and Matt Goodwin and Todd Miller were there for Iowa State to really wrap him up, and he hung on to the football. It looked like he was going to try and pitch it late, but he wisely hung on to it. He got only two yards. Well defensed by Iowa State. On a cold day like this, when you start to pitch the football, you get hit. It's easy to fumble. That was a good job by Frazier not to fumble, but the best defensive play so far in the game for Iowa State. Second down and eight for Nebraska. Here's the eye back Brown, and he is wrestled down, a gain of two. Back at the 18-yard line, Peterson on the stop for Iowa State. So a pickup of two that time. They may move it back to the 19, so give him a yard on it. And Iowa State doing better that time against the rush of the eye back who sets up way back almost seven or eight yards in the backfield. Well, the Cyclone defense has had trouble this season. It's first stand. Let's see whether they can make a big play right here. Look for Frazier to get the ball to the corner. Might be some play action on this play. Third down and seven for Nebraska. At the 19, going to his left on the option, cuts it inside, he's hit and doesn't go for much. He gets to about the 16-yard line. A gain of three, Malcolm Goodwin and Peterson there for Iowa State. And Todd Miller again for the Cyclones. Gain of three by Frazier. Well, much better job by the Cyclone defensive lineman of playing off their blocks and stringing out the play. That enables everybody else to come up and support and not have to make the first contact. Good job by everyone, really. And Bennett will be in to try a field goal. So Bennett comes on, and they'll spot this one at about the 22-yard line, making it a 32-yard attempt for Nebraska. Ball pretty much in the middle of the field. Awaiting the snap, it is down. The kick is up. It sails long and through, and it's tied at three with 5.17 left to play. We now move to action later in the first quarter. First down, Iowa State at the Cyclones' 32-yard line. Score tied in the first quarter at three apiece. Double wing formation. Seiler rides the fullback in. This time pulls it out. He's across the 40s. He's crossed midfield to the 45 to the 40, all the way to the 36 of Nebraska. Tyrone Bird again has to make the stop for the Huskers. The free safety's made two on long runs, and Seiler scampers down to the 36 of Nebraska. 32-yard run. Well, good blocking once again, but a great decision. They ride that fullback. Marvin doesn't get the play strung out. He cuts it up once he sees he has the opening, and he cuts back against the grain. Marvin's showing really pretty good speed that time, similar to what he did a couple of weeks ago against Missouri. So Iowa State back in Nebraska territory. First down at the 36-yard line. Ball in the middle of the playing field. Here's the give to the fullback this time, and Patterson gets down where his progress carries him to the 33 for a gain of about three. Bruce Moore on the stop for Nebraska, so it's a pickup of about three. Brings up second down and seven for Iowa State. Second down and seven for Iowa State. The ball at the Nebraska 33-yard line. Three receivers to the left. They hand it back to Knott. Knott fighting his way forward to the 30. And it's a gain of three more for Iowa State. And brings up third down at about four. Cyclones not throwing the ball, but doing a good job of mixing up the run. They've kept Nebraska off balance, but I think part of it is the execution they've had. They've had good blocking at the point of attack on, on most plays, and you can have a great game plan, but if you don't execute it and block your assignment, then it's not going to look very good anyway. But Iowa State's fired up today, and they're doing a good job here in the early going. Third down and four for Iowa State at the 30 of Nebraska. Double wing formation on this third down play, and it's Seiler keeping the ball. Cuts it in. First down. Marv Seiler again running the option to perfection, and he gets it all the way down to the 20 three-yard line. Gain 
of about seven on the carry for Seiler. First down, Iowa State. Tackle made by Perella again. Once, once again, though, the offensive line doing a good job. It's, you know, last week they were forced to go with a makeshift offensive, some changes in three different positions because of the injury to Todd McClish. Now they've had another week to gel. And it looks like they're doing a much, much better job here today. First down at the Nebraska 23-yard line. Set in the wishbone this time on his first down play. And it's Siler rolling to his right, keeps it, cuts it back, and gets it to the 19-yard line for a gain of four. Marv Siler churning out yardage here. 56 yards on eight carries. Bird and Moore make the tackle on him. You know, the one thing that he looks like he's doing, Eric, is being patient. He's not rushing anything on that option. He's kind of angling it out, and then when he finds a hole, he cuts it upfield in a hurry. I think that's the key, though. He's, he's confident in what he's doing. He has reads that he's making properly, and when he sees he has the ability to run, he's not wasting any time. He's going right to it. Second down and six for Iowa State. Ball at the 19-yard line of Nebraska. Seiler may be changing the play as the play clock runs down. He gets it underway to Patterson, straight up the middle, and he fights his way inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line. And it looks like enough for the first down. Anderson on the stop. Well, if he did change the play, it was a good call. First down, Iowa State. He must have seen the linebacker, inside linebacker, move to the outside, take a step because he went right inside that time and they were able to seal off that linebacker and Sundiata Patterson able to pick up the first down. So the ball is at the Nebraska 13 and this first quarter is zooming by. Minute 20 left, it's three to three. Double wing formation this time for Iowa State. Play underway, Seiler looking to pitch. Now he keeps it and is thrown for a loss. Back at the 15, good decision. Perella wrapped him up and nothing good could have come of that had he pitched the ball. Now, if you pitch the ball back to Jim Knott five yards farther back, he's gonna have to make a great run to get back with what uh, Marvin lost on that play. So, good decision by Marvin Seiler, who's playing like an experienced veteran. He's a veteran, but he doesn't have a lot of experience. A fifth-year senior getting his first start of his career. Let's look for an option play here, possibly. Branch is also in the game with Garras now. Second down and 12, rolling out as Siler shovels it underneath, and Patterson makes the catch, but he's wrapped up as he gets to the 14, so he didn't get much, maybe a yard, and that's about it. So Nebraska defensing that play much better this time. Perella again is there for the Cornhuskers, and it'll be third down and about 11 for Iowa State. Terry Connolly also on the stop. Well, it's a couple of passing situations Iowa State's been in. They've gone to the shovel pass both times. Now they're in it for a third time. Let's see what they elect to do. It's again Iowa State against the wind in the first quarter, and they may not get this play off as it runs down to four seconds, and Iowa State will probably let it go, and at least they'll have the wind in the second quarter, and it does run out. So at the end of the first quarter, Iowa State and Nebraska are tied at three apiece in eight. Third and 12 for Iowa State, and they try to run the fullback Patterson, and he is stuffed on the play by Terry Connolly. No gain on the play for Iowa State, maybe a half yard, and that's about it. So they're lined up for a field goal attempt coming up as the ball is right in the middle of the playing field for the Cyclones. So fullback trying to run on third and 12, and Nebraska was not fooled. Well, they know Iowa State's not going to gamble too much in normal situations, but let's see if they try a fake here. It's spotted at the 22-yard line. Schnorr to hold again. Stewart kicks it up. It sails up and through, and Iowa State grabs the lead at 6-3 to three on a 32-yard field goal by Ty Stewart. We now move to action later in the second quarter. Again, Jones stays in. He's the eye back. He's the only man in the backfield right now. Frazier, the quarterback, from the 10-yard line on first down. Rolling out to the near side. Now he may cut it back. He does, and he gets past Fulton, breaks it to the center of the field. He's outside at the 30, and he's down the sideline at midfield. Dubrava finally hauls him down at the 38-yard line of Iowa State. So the play action drew him in, and Iowa State had some men out there, but Frazier just cut it back against the grain and went right past him all the way to the 38. Well, you, you're exactly right, Pete. Iowa State had the play covered, the, the bootleg, was a good call in that situation, but Iowa State defended it pretty well in terms of having people there. But great players make great plays, and that time Tommy Frazier just made moves on two uh, defenders for Iowa State. The Duke had cut back, and 
He made that play all on his own. 52-yard pickup. Down at the Iowa State 38. First down for Nebraska. Out of the I formation this time. Fullback Lewis carries, and he almost pops through, but he's caught by the ankles and dragged down. And on the stop is Jeff Cole as he gets it down to about the 33. So a gain of around five, let's call it five, and brings up second and five for Nebraska. Lewis averaging nine yards a carry. He got five that time. Good tackle by Jeff Cole. He's starting today at the weak side linebacker spot. He has played a lot behind Dan Milner, but they've moved over to the other spot and makes a, a very important tackle because there was a lot of room if Cole doesn't make that play. Second and five for Nebraska. Again in the I formation. From the 33, the pitch to Jones, and he's outside to the 26 and out of bounds. Jones picks up seven. Malcolm Goodwin runs him out of bounds. Well, this Nebraska offense just is so reminiscent of the great Nebraska offense of about 10 years ago with Turner Gill and Mike Rozier. First from the 27. First down from the 27-yard line now, and they may be changing the play. They've got Brown and Jones in there now. And Brown is split left. Now he moves to the right side in the slot. First down play for Nebraska. Back to throw is Frazier. Looking for him. Throws it out. Incomplete. Looking for Brown. It's incomplete. And Dixon was out there. Excuse me, not Brown. Matt Goodwin with good coverage for Iowa State. It is second down, 10 at the Iowa State 27-yard line. Power eye formation in the backfield for Nebraska. Long count here on second down at the 27. Man in motion. Here's the option to the short side. Frazier cuts it back in and drives it down to the 21-yard line. So he got six on the carry. Brings up third down and four. Dubrava making the tackle. 86 yards rushing for the quarterback Frazier so far. And we've got 12.45 to play in the first half. So he's having a, a terrific start. Both quarterbacks are. Marvin Seiler also, also with pick numbers. He has 54 yards and nine carries. Third down and four yards to go at the 21-yard line for Nebraska. High formation ball on the far side hash mark. Nebraska going to our left. Out of the eye on third down. The quick pitch goes to Jones. He breaks one tackle on his feet to the 15-yard line and picks up the first down. There was good penetration in the backfield. And Todd, Todd Miller, Miller was there, but he couldn't quite hang on to him, and he broke free, took it to the 15 for a gain of six and a first down. Watkins on the stop along with Jeff Cole. But Todd had him that time just by the jersey, but it takes more than that. What Todd really needed there was somebody else to come up and help him at that point. Nebraska's offensive line did just a good enough job, and Jones made it with his athletic ability to pick up the first down. First down at the 15. 6-3, Cyclones leading. Power eye in the backfield once again. Receiver split to the right. Here's the rollout by Frazier. He stops. He wants to throw back, and now he's caught from the backside. Breaks free, and now he finally throws it. Is caught out there by Lewis at the five touchdown. What a great play by the quarterback, Tommy Frazier. As he was going down, it looked like he was just throwing it away. He sidearmed it out there. Lewis caught it and took it in for a touchdown. A great play by Frazier. Well, the first play, he, part of that play that was great was the tackle that he broke. He got out of the grass with someone as he started to run the football. I thought he was going to throw it back to the weak side, but he got pressured at that time and got hit by Dunlevy. He was able to break that tackle. And I thought, boy, are they going to call intentional grounding on this? <laughs> All of a sudden, the ball is zipped to, to Lance Lewis. Lance Lewis who carries it in for the touchdown. 15-yard touchdown play on just a tremendous athletic move. So do you think Tommy Frazier's a difference maker? I think so. I haven't seen many quarterbacks that can make that play. Extra point attempt is up and through. It's 10 to 6 now. Nebraska leading Iowa State. We now move to action later in the second quarter. And they're set in the wishbone formation. Branch and Williams are the halfbacks. And it's Seiler dropping to throw. He's rushed, and now he's trying to run out, and he's thrown for a loss back at the 30-yard line by John Perella, who has been back there. Now a flag comes out, and we may have a roughing call on this. The loss was back to the 30-yard line. Then the flag came out, and Seiler got dumped pretty good. And I don't know whether somebody went over and said something to him afterwards or what. The flag came out late, and let's 
wait and see what the officials come to the center of the field to tell us. Well, play action that time. It looked like Iowa State was going to try to set up the screen, but Nebraska apparently had covered it. It's a dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct against Nebraska. Third down play for Iowa State. Linebackers move in tight for Nebraska. Double wing formation. Here's Seiler carrying, cuts it back in, and picks up the first down at the 50-yard line. Good work by Marv Seiler. His path was blocked to the outside, and he very quickly turned on a dive, carried it straight up field, and got five and a first down. Well, Cyclones in the wishbone set, and Nebraska tried to force quickly from the outside with the corners. The Cyclones did a good job of kicking those men out. Marvin Seiler couldn't waste any time, had to be quick, cut the ball up, so he had a shot at picking up the first down. There was not going to be a pitch available on that play at all. Another good decision by Marv Seiler. Well, Iowa State sends three receivers right side this time. Allridge in the backfield. First down play. Allridge carries. He pops through 45 down to about the 42-yard line. A gain of eight by Allridge on a real quick opener for Iowa State. Going right over center Scott Armbrust. And he picks up close to 10. They spotted down almost at the 40-yard line now. And he's just shy of a first down. So give him nine. Burn on the tackle along with Ernie Beyer. Once again, Iowa State moving the football against the Huskers and using clock. Second down, a yard to go at the Nebraska 41-yard line. Again, they have the double wing formation clock running down the play clock. They get it underway. Allridge carries, and he's in down inside the 35 to the 34 and picks up a first down. Morella on the stop, but it's a pickup of seven by Chris Allridge. Well, Iowa State just doing the job up front today so far. Well, that offensive line patchwork right now, even more than it was coming into the game. And Iowa State has not punted yet in this football game. They have yet to get a touchdown, and one would be big right here. And Iowa State has just controlled the football every time they've had it, eating the clock with time-consuming drives. First down, and here's Seiler with the late pitch, going to branch around the left side, puts his head down and gets out of bounds inside the 30 barely, I think. It's going to be a gain of around four yards, John Reese, over there on coverage for Nebraska. So the freshman, Calvin Branch, on the carry, and he gets about four yards. That's his first run of the ball game. Second down and six for Iowa State at the 30-yard line. Iowa State, second down and six at the Nebraska 30-yard line. Play underway, and it's all rich, just tripped up. No gain. Trying to get that quick hook again, but didn't pan out this time. No gain. Third down and six coming up. Perella again on the stop. We've called his name. It seems like 50 times already. Darren Williams also on the stop. That time Perella made the play right at the point of attack, but he's made some tackles downfield. Done a good job of showing his hustle. He also has one big sack. Third down and six for Iowa State. The ball at the 30-yard line of Nebraska. Two receivers left. Here's the option to the near side. Seiler with a late pitch going to Sherman Williams, and he's inside the 30, but not enough as he gets down to around the 27-yard line. Darren Williams on the stop, gain of about three by Sherman, and the field goal unit comes on for Iowa State with six minutes and 12 seconds left to play in the first half. It is 10 to 10-6, the Huskers leading. Well, four, about four yards to go, a little too far, and Iowa State's going to try to move to within one point here with less than six minutes to play in the half. This will be the longest field goal attempt today by Ty Stewart. It'll be spotted at the 35-yard line, 45-yard attempt. Schnorr puts it down, kick is up, heading for the goal post. It's good. And Ty Stewart is three out of three, and Iowa State pulls to within a point. It is 10 to 9 with 5.49 left to play. We now move to action later in the second quarter. First down for Iowa State at the Nebraska 40-yard line. Seiler, shovel pass to Sundiata Patterson. 35-30, down to the 29-yard line. First down, Iowa State, a gain of 11 on the shovel pass to Sundiata Patterson. Dave White makes the stop. Let's get first pass. Cyclones have tried on first down today. Even though it was a shovel pass, I think it got the Huskers back on their heels just for a second. Well, Iowa State's thrown three passes, and they've all been of that variety today. And they've picked up 24 yards on those three plays. First down at the 29-yard line. 
Here's Seiler with a late pitch to Garris around the left side. He's hit hard, but he hangs on to the football as he's inside the 25-yard line. Tackle made by Steve Carmer. Took a good hit, but he hung on to the football. And goes right to the sideline, shaking his head a little bit. Ball's marked to the 22-yard line. A pickup of six. So Artis Garris has carried twice, and each time has gained six. Ball at the 22, second down and four. Iowa State with kind of a power eye look in the backfield this time. It's Garris, the second man through. He's down inside the 20 to the 19-yard line for a gain of three more. And it'll be third down and a yard. Artis Garris getting the call. It's going to be close enough to measure. Keneally makes the stop on him along with David White. The Cyclones have it at the 19-yard line with Nebraska leading 10 to 9. And three minutes and 34 seconds left to play in the first half. Double wing formation at the 19-yard line for Iowa State. Seiler gives the ball off to Patterson, and he lugs it down around the 15-yard line where they pile him up. And they'll spot it just short of that. Darren Williams and Mike Anderson over there on the stop for Nebraska. They'll put it at the 16, so it'll give Sundiata a gain of three, second and seven. Second down and seven at the Nebraska 16-yard line. Rouse to the right side, Spencer left. Double wing once again. Not and Garris are the halfbacks. Patterson's the fullback. Plenty of time on the play clock as Seiler seems to be changing the play. Hands it off to Patterson, and Patterson gets down for a gain of about three more, he's inside the 15-yard line, down to about, it looks like the 13 from here. It's on the far side of the field. Darren Williams on the tackle. And it'll be third down and about three. So they give him four on the carry. And they spot that down to the 12-yard line. The Cyclones keep driving ahead. Doug Regaler in that offensive line appears to be doing a good job since coming on for the injured Jim Thompson. It's third down and three for Iowa State. Ball at the 13 of Nebraska. Brooks to the right, Spencer to the left. They drop the football, Seiler picks it up and has to eat it. Fumble on the exchange and he loses about a yard on the play back to the 14. So the field goal team comes on and if Stewart can punch it through, Iowa State can take the lead. Well, Marvin bounced that one a little bit. Cyclones are gonna go with the reverse option. But a good job by Marvin just to hang on to it and give Ty Stewart a chance. Spotted at the 20. It'll be a 30-yard attempt. John Schnorr puts it down. The kick is up. It is good. And Iowa State takes the lead. The fourth field goal of this game by Ty Stewart. We'll be back with second half action after these messages. you an individual is more than just what you do and how you do it it's where you've been where you want to go it's your beliefs fears and needs which is why your farm bureau agent cares enough to get to know you so your insurance and financial plans meet your needs today and change with you to meet them tomorrow the farm bureau family our most important policy is caring Stewart set to boot it off. Allrich officially with 57 yards and 56 yards by Seilers. The kick goes over toward Hughes. Fields it at the 8. Starts up field 15 and he's dropped again inside the 20. This time it's Lillibridge downfield for Iowa State at the 18-yard line. Iowa State with really good kick coverage so far in today's game. First down play from the 18. Out of the eye formation for Nebraska. Derrick Brown takes the handoff looking for room he's dropped as he gets to the 20 a gain of two Watkins playing off a block and he's helped out by Matt Goodwin and it's a pickup of two yards but Derek Brown back into the game he played the first quarter Jones played the second quarter for Nebraska second down at eight ball at the 20-yard line of the Huskers 12-10 Iowa State with the lead 
Early into the second half, again it's Brown. This time he breaks to the outside, breaks the tackle, and then is brought down at the 25 on a good, sure tackle by Matt Goodwin at the 25-yard line. It looked like he was getting ready to slide to the outside and really turn it upfield. He got five. It's third down and three. Well, a good run by Derek Brown. He's a he's a fine running back. You can see that with that move right there. But Iowa State made a sure tackle of Matt Goodwin. Third down and three to go for Nebraska at their own 25-yard line. Power eye formation in the backfield. Here's Frazier running the option to the near side. He keeps it. He's dropped at the 25-yard line. Malcolm Goodwin makes the play on Frazier as he tried to cut. Goodwin got him and dropped him, and Frazier's limping off the field. He's had a little trouble at the end of the half with an angle. Looks like he's having more right now. No gain on the play, and Nebraska will kick it away. Uh, just a great job by the defense in first series. Uh, let's see if Nebraska kicks it away from James McMillian again. Fourth down and three. One thing to remember about Nebraska, they're, they're more than willing to try a fake and a lot of different things in a football game, so you have to be leery of that at all times. Iowa State showing a 10-man front as Stiggy stands back at his 11-yard line. And Iowa State with a pretty good rush. He pounds it out of there. Fair catch signaled for, taken by McMillian at the 40-yard line. The Iowa State 40, so the Cyclones start out first down at their own 40. Three and out for the Huskers. A good job by the defense. Iowa State with the first down at its own 40-yard line. Wishbone in the backfield, and the give is to Sherman Williams, and he gets about a yard, and that's all, to the 41-yard line. Good penetration by Trev Albers. And it's a gain of a yard for the Cyclones, second and nine coming up. Well, you know the Huskers got tuned up at halftime, especially the, the defenders, because Iowa State never had to punt in the first half. One yard on the play. And let's see if Iowa State elects to stay on the ground. I think that's going to be the plan, work the clock. But there's got to be a point in the game where maybe you work in the play action. Second down, nine to go for Iowa State from the Cyclones' 41-yard line. Seiler looking to throw. Now he's in trouble, and he's going to take the sack, a loss of two, back to the 39-yard line. Going to the shovel pass that time once again, but Chris Ulrich had gotten tied up with John Perella. And Bruce Moore able to come in and make the play on Marvin Seiler, but really no place for Marvin to go. Loss of two, so it's back to the 39-yard line. Brings up third down and about 12 for Iowa State. Shovel pass is one that, if it's not there, you're really kind of stuck because the, the linemen are on a count, and they start going downfield to block, so you'll have a lineman downfield if you try to throw it deep. Third down and 12 for Iowa State. Here's Seiler on the hand back to Ulrich. Straight up the middle, 45, 50, first down, 45, all the way to the 38 of Nebraska. On the draw play, Steve Carver makes the stop. They'll spot it at the 39, but a big gain for Ulrich and a first down, 22-yard pickup. Well, a big third down conversion, and I'll tell you what, the groundhog had a nice hole to run through, but he gets to it so quickly, and a nice safe call when you're ahead by two points, third and long, the draw play, and Nebraska just got blocked on the play. Iowa State executes once more. All reach out of the game. Patterson is in for Iowa State. It's first down at the Nebraska 39-yard line. Double wing formation. And the pitch is out to Sherman Williams, who makes a nice catch and tries to turn the corner. Gets inside the 40 down to about the 37. So Williams had to go back for the ball, and when he did, it took about half a stride away. Will Height and Bird up to make the stop. But he was able to get positive yardage out of it. A couple of yards down to the 37. Well, that was one of those pitches that Marvin just barely got off and he flipped it just a little bit high. But Sherman, an experienced back, realizing number one thing is catch that football when it's pitched to you. Second down and eight for Iowa State at the 37-yard line of Nebraska. He split out of the wishbone this time. It's Patterson straight up the middle across the 35 to the 34. John Perella leading the charge, a gain of about four yards on the carry, three or four yards. They'll spot it at the 34, so give him three. It brings up third down and close to five yards to go. Michigan, 22. Michigan came back to tie that game. It's 22 all final. 
That's two ties, though, for Michigan, so that really hurts them, I think, in terms of winning a national championship. That almost counts as about a loss in most people's mind. But another big third down. Third down and five for Iowa State. At the 34, Nebraska blitzes on. They hand it back to Sherman Williams, and he doesn't get it. He goes for about a yard, and that's all. Keneally makes the stop on him. Keneally closed quickly because it looked like there was a hole there. Sherman just couldn't get there in time. And now Iowa State is going to send Ty Stewart on. It would be about a 50-yard attempt with the wind. And you've got to take your attempts to score when you have the wind because you're going to have to drive it a lot farther, probably about to the 20-yard line when you're going into the wind. In Iowa State's case, that'll be in the fourth quarter. Well, he's already had four field goals in this game. This would tie an Iowa State record. It's a 51-yard attempt spotted at the 41-yard line. Schnorr puts it down. Kick is blocked by Nebraska. Picked up by Schnorr at the 40-yard line. So the Huskers will have it. Trav Alberts came through to block it and they'll have it at their own 40 so he came even through though the, it was blocked at least they did not pick it up and run it yeah ty went right and got the ball that time trev alberts went right between the outside man and the second man and had early penetration and just smothered the ball we now move to action later in the fourth quarter down for Nebraska at its own 43-yard line. Offset eye in the backfield. Jones is back in there. It's the option of the near side. Frazier keeps it and down. No, he breaks out of that. Now he's going to be thrown for a loss back at the 40. They wrapped him up and finally threw him out of bounds. Dubrava over there with a host of others for Iowa State. And there's a loss of a couple of yards back to the 41-yard line. I tell you what, Huskers really got away with something after the play, too. Calvin Jones blocked Malcolm Goodwin in the back after the play was over into the Nebraska sideline. So it's second down and 12 yards to go for Nebraska. At the 41-yard line of the Huskers, 12 to 10, Iowa State leading in the fourth quarter. Here's a quick pitch to Jones looking for room and down he goes at the 39, a loss of a yard covering him up, Todd Miller for Iowa State. Well, look for the reverse here. Iowa State has flown to the, to the football so hard here in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter, that they may be ripe for misdirection. Or at least that would be the conventional wisdom at this point. And the Huskers have always had good reverse plays in their scheme. They've got Jones as the lone running back in this formation. Two receivers out left. And here's Frazier to throw. Looking, throwing out there. It is by Nebrava. Off the hands of Muhammad, a great rush by Todd Miller, though. Forced the pass to be a little bit high. It was off the hands of the receiver, Dixon, and almost into the hands of Nebrava. I tell you, the Cyclone defense has been terrific. Here in the second half, they have done the job. Actually, they did it in the first half, too, giving up only 10 points. But Tommy Frazier paying the price for everything he tries to do. Iowa State showing a 10-man front. Stiggy at the 25 and McMillian back deep, and they're going to try and set up a return. It's an end-over-end -end kick that bounces down toward McMillian and past him and will roll into the end zone. So it'll be brought to the 20. And Iowa State will start out. I was thinking for a moment it might roll dead down there, but it got a little hop to it as it hit the five and went on into the end zone. Iowa State comes out in the double-wing formation. First down play. And it's Siler keeping, trying to turn the corner. He does. He pops through at the 30s to the 40. In midfield to the 45, to the 30, to the 25, to the 15, to the 10, to the three-yard line. Marvin Siler almost breaks it all the way. 77 yards to the Nebraska three. It's just a type of play that you expect Nebraska to run against Iowa State. They get that option play to the corner. Marvin cuts it up. Really... Pretty good defense, except nobody able to get the angle on Marvin Seiler. He cut it up. And Marvin's not the fastest guy in the world, but I tell you what, he's a lot faster than people give him credit for. He did a great job not to fumble as they tried to strip him from behind as they made the tackle and drove him all the way to the two-yard line. He's got to be gassed. The ball is spotted at the two-yard line. A 
78-yard gallop by Marv Seiler. First and goal, Iowa State. At the Nebraska two-yard line, and Marv calls timeout. That's probably a very smart play. First and goal for Iowa State. Ball is at the three-yard line to give us to all Rich. He's driving, and is he in? Let's see. He's right down on the goal line. He was in, I'm sure. They haven't given him. Yes. Touchdown! Touchdown. 10.50 to play, but I tell you what, a, a wonderful two-play drive. And what a game Marv Seiler now offense is having. Extra point attempt coming up. Snore puts it down. A kick is up. It's good. It's 19-10. Iowa State on top with 10.50 to play in the football game. We now move to action later in the fourth quarter. First down from their own 34-yard line. The line up in the wishbone. Freshman running backs are in there. And it's a hand to Branch. He's up across to the 40-yard line. Gate of six. Sean Walker makes the stop on him. Or, excuse me, John Reese makes the stop on Calvin Branch, but he gets six on first down. It looked like Branch had a little hard time getting the handle from Marvin Seiler on that but he reeled it in and runs hard. Six yards, and the clock moves. Second down and four to go at the 40-yard line of Iowa State. Cyclones need first downs. Now line up again, and this time the double wing formation. Rouse to the right, Spencer left. The give is to Allrich. He bucks up to about the 42-yard line. Gain of a couple of yards. Anderson there to make the stop for Nebraska. And it'll be third down. Iowa State needing a long two. Uh, first down here just gives you another minute and a half to take off the clock if you can get it. Third down play at the 41-yard line. Iowa State will line up in a double wing formation. Hughes left, Spencer to the right. Double wing formation, third down play. Here's Seiler, tucking it inside. He drives forward, and I think he got it. Up to the 45 and a first down. Gain of four by Marv Seiler, and the Cyclones keep control of the football. Well, that's a big play right there. You get that, make that conversion. 3.54 to play in the ball game. And now the clock starts moving once again. Marv Seiler with 141 yards rushing in this ball game. Ball at the Iowa State 45. First down. Wishbone formation. One man split and Spencer wide to the left side. Everybody in tight and Branch carries and he's popped pretty hard right at the line of scrimmage. Boy, Nebraska is selling out right now, Eric. They make the timeout call. They are bringing everybody because they know Iowa State's just going to run the ball. It might be time to maybe pull one out and bootleg it here. Well, it might be. You know, but you're up two scores. There's 327 to play. You're going to force the Huskers to use all their timeouts here. If you're incomplete, that gives them more time. LLV reports look for an option play from the sideline. With Garris going after the inside linebacker, they're in the wishbone. It's second down. And about 10 to go. Seiler keeps it, and he's hit hard, but he hangs on to the ball as he gets to the 49-yard line. He got about three yards in Nebraska. We'll call time once again here. He tailored Eric Kipp back at Ames. It is third down and six for Iowa State. And here comes the draw play. Carrying the ball is Garris trying to break a tackle. He gets outside, and he picks up the first down all the way to the 37-yard line. Freshman running back, Artis Garris, skirting to the right side, broke a couple of tackles. First down, Iowa State at the 37-yard line. Well, a hard running back from Bellevue, Nebraska, Artis Garris, the freshman, runs through a couple of tackles. The ball play was pretty well set up. The delay play, the draw to the halfback, and he cuts it off the right side, had good enough blocking, but he ran through the arm tackles that a good back has to run through if he's going to pick up the first down. And it keeps the clock running. 
53 left to play at the 37-yard line. First down, Iowa State. Out of the wishbone formation. Branch carries, and he dives to the 35-yard line for a gain of two. And it's the freshman backs that are in there at the end of the ball game. Nebraska takes a timeout. 2.39 to go. It'll be second and eight for Iowa State at the Nebraska 35. Second down and eight. Iowa State at the Nebraska 35, leading 19 to 10. Seiler keeps rolling out to his left, cuts it back in, and is hit and finally dropped. He finally goes down at the 34 for a gain of a yard, but it'll keep the clock moving. Nebraska is out of timeouts. Seiler adds one more yard to his credit, 145 yards on 22 carries for Marv Seiler. And the Cyclones are just going to keep that clock running right now. Here on third down, and they're going to run it on fourth down, too. At this point, I don't think you risk a punt, even. Double wing. Let's see if they go to the draw again. It's worked well every time on third down. Double wing formation. Seiler hands it off inside, and Ulrich pops up to about the 32. Nebraska signaling if they have the football here. Let's see if that is the call. Nope, it isn't. Iowa State retains possession at the 32-yard line. A gain of a couple of yards by Ulrich, and it's fourth down with a minute 40 to play. And Iowa State will be able to take this snap with about a minute 15 to play. The students are massing on the far side. This is an incredible afternoon. It is fourth down for Iowa State. They need about five for the first down. Out of the wishbone, Seiler hands it back to Garris, and he's fighting for yardage. First down, Artis Garris to the 25-yard line. He gains seven, and Iowa State keeps the football with a minute 14 to play. And if there was any doubt, that's it right there. The Cyclones can fall on it. Just kneel down, and it's going to be an upset of monumental proportions. A banged-up Iowa State team. Coming in, a 29-point underdog at home against the seventh-ranked team in the nation. Fifth on one pole. They're going to be the hottest team in college football. Consider that they defeated Colorado and Kansas by 1-14 one, one the last two weeks. As Siler just downs it. Siler goes down to one knee, and that clock will run. And you hate to overdo superlatives here, but this may be, may be the biggest upset Iowa State has ever had. It is 19 to 10, the clock running with 40 seconds to go. An incredible effort by Iowa State this afternoon, and they're going to win this football game. There's nothing Nebraska can do about it. Iowa State played very well on offense. You can't name a person who didn't have a great game, but the defense held the Huskers scoreless in the second half, the number one offense in the nation. Siler goes down to a knee again, and that's going to do it. Here comes the team. Here comes the fans, and there go the goalposts. Ten seconds to play. Iowa State has upset Nebraska, winning for the first time since 1977. And not only upset them, Eric, they've done it convincingly because they did it with much more total yardage in this ball game. They stuffed them in the second half, and they win it by a score of 19 to 10. Well, the aroused defense uh, just kept hanging in there. Nebraska really had only one chance to score. They were going to attempt a field goal about 47 yards into the wind in the third quarter, but they got called for delay a game on that and didn't even get to try that. As the and the goalposts go down, and people have to be a little careful here, of course. They had some people injured last week when this happened in Manhattan. What a turnaround. Iowa State goes from losing at Manhattan, Kansas, to coming home and knocking off Nebraska, a team that has just steamrolled everybody here in recent weeks.
It's great. Yeah. It's yeah. beautiful. Thanks, baby. Good job. Uh, good, job. good job. Good job. Good job. Great job, man. Thanks, great job. <laughs> we'll be back to wrap up today's game right after these messages. I'm working my way up, making tomorrow a better day. Everyone has dreams, but mine are coming true. And you were always there to say. Final score, 19 to 10. Iowa State over fifth-ranked Nebraska. I don't know what more you can say than an unbelievable effort, an incredible effort by Iowa State offensively, defensively, special teams. Everything was about as perfect as you could get it, Eric. Well, it's the components you have to have if you're going to knock off an outstanding football team that Nebraska is. And you've got to have almost play a perfect football game. And Iowa State had no turnovers today. I believe they had only one penalty for five yards. And that's the kind of things you have to do. But even more than that, you've got to execute. And I think great execution told the story today. And I think they got some good play from some fresh young legs, Artis Garris, Calvin Branch, and a lot of the same old familiar faces back there, too, I thought did a good job. Offensive line, defensive line, dominated the line of scrimmage, and that's where the game was won. And we ought to put in a pitch here for the coaching staff, too, a game plan that they stuck to from the opening kickoff, controlled the line of scrimmage, had 37 minutes of possession time today, and that yielded only a little bit more than 22 minutes for Nebraska. That's another unbelievable statistic because uh, Nebraska usually is the team that has that football and scores in a hurry, and they could not do it today. Well, they scored the first couple times they had it, and that's really about it for them. They didn't score after that. I thought the defense made the good adjustments, and I thought they played hard. Once again, they won the battle in the trenches. The front four, front seven for Iowa State, stopped the running game completely, and they weren't burned by the big pass play because the secondary didn't have to sell out to stop the run. So that's... That's it in a nutshell. It was just a great performance, and I'm tickled. And I'm happy for a lot of people, including Jim Walden, but also his coaches, who I think have, have done a great job this year. They've worked very hard and maybe not gotten the credit they deserve. Well, that 19-10 to 10 score is still hanging on the scoreboard, and I hope that it hangs on there all week long because Iowa State deserves to be able to come out to practice and see that all week long. And the next home game is not until uh, no Northern Illinois to open <laughs> the season next year. That's right. So the victory for Iowa State makes them four and six on the season. The finale coming up against Colorado. It'll be hard pressed for an Iowa State team to do better than they did this afternoon. But certainly this effort will never be forgotten. 19 to 10. Iowa State over Nebraska. We'll see you next week with more of Cyclone Replay.